Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's one of them days. <laughs> so over the last couple of days I've realised there's a, a noise coming from this area of the van around, let me show you, around this area of the van. I couldn't really pinpoint it. <coughs> Excuse the mess. But I think I found it. Well, let's start it up and I'll, sh I'll show you. I don't know if you can hear that, but that sounds like, sounds like a gear, sometimes you know when you drag a gear in, it sounds like that, definitely coming from around this area, so we're going to turn the van off and we're going to find out what it is. If I pick the revs, if I just pick the revs up a little bit, it goes away, so I don't think it's anything major because it would keep making that noise. I've got a couple of options, so I'm going to go and have a look now, try and get to the bottom of what's going on, what this noise is. Whatever this is, I first noticed it, there was a smell, and I couldn't place this smell. I thought, it wasn't burning oil, it isn't burning rubber, it isn't a burning clutch, but it's, the smell is really distinctive, and I... I'm still trying to describe it to other people. I just don't know how how to describe this smell. It, it's like an acrid burning smell. Yeah. So I've got out there and the smell, the smell is there. I really cannot describe this smell. I tell you what, it, it smells like burnt coffee grounds. That's the only way I can describe it. The airbox is out of the way. We've taken the top of the cam cover off. We'll just check the belt, check the condition of all the pulleys. That seems to look okay. Um, the smell's there, it's stinking. Let's try and zoom in. So on the auxiliary belt there, I don't know if they're wear marks or see them there some funny looking marks on the belt so we'll start with the auxiliary belt the fan belt pulley looks to be okay the belt looks to be okay um it's, it's the smell i think we're in the right area the smell is horrendous the viscous fan is moving okay that doesn't seem to be sticking, it's not loose. With problems like this, it is a process of elimination, so I can see marks on the belt, so we'll start looking at that auxiliary belt, see if, uh, see if there's anything down there causing a problem to the belt, see if something's got stuck, foul in it, making that smell. Well, we called it a day last night, the weather closed in and it got pretty rough, so. Come after the storm, <laughs> and another critic, the crow. Right, I'm glad I did stop last night because I went away and I had a little think about what what it could be. I had a little troll through the internet, so I'm going. There's a couple of places I'm going to look at today, and uh, well, I found one issue straight away, and I'm going to try and show you it. It's going to be difficult because down. Let me show you. Down there is not the best angle to show you anything, but I'm going to try my hardest. So all these pipes are in the way, and this is exactly where I need to show you what's going on. So Put it right in there. I'm hoping you can I'll try to show you where the issue is. But them two belts there, two pulleys are touching. And I'm hoping you can see that. They shouldn't be touching. So the one on the left is, 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 is that left? I've got you upside down at the minute, so I'm trying to work out in my head. So the one on the left is the cam belt, the auxiliary belt tensioner. And that looks like it's failed. Now, they can fail for no reason, but 
there's a good indication that this might be the alternator clutch. So if the alternator clutch goes, it adds a lot of pressure onto the system and it makes that belt work a lot harder. Um, basically, it seizes up or it can do a number of things. It can seize up or it can free run. And with the free run with no resistance on it, that can make the um, belt jump around. And again, the opposite way can put lots of tension on it. So we need to have a look at that. We need to make sure that we've not um, we've not got two failures, two broken items here. It definitely looks like the alternator ten uh, the auxiliary belt tension is gone. Um, I need to take that belt off. Obviously, I can't move the tension at the minute um, for some reason. I'm going to have to try. Well, it, it's broken. Looking at it, it's broken. It's touching the other pulley. So that might be where the smell come from. That might be the actual issue. So I need to take the belt off, take the tension off and check it all. And it's all blind work. It's, you know, I can get my hands in there, but I can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna to have to do it all by touch. So, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't rain, but it pours. And we'll plan it to go away in a couple of weeks. So I need to get it done really quickly. Anyway, let's crack on. So looking at it, it looks like the end of that at the end of the alternator. Oh, have I left the bloody light on all night? I am getting bad at this. I am getting bad at this. I've walked away and left these on a couple of times, look. Oh, we'll have a look at the battery in a minute and see how that's doing. That's on the... <laughs> that is on the... Which battery is that on? I can't remember. Yeah, it's on the, it's on the leisure battery, so we should be all right. <coughs> yeah, the clutch on the end of the alternator, I believe, is knackered. Um, just thinking through it, what that clutch should do is, as the engine starts up, there's that initial snap. Um, I think it's there to absorb some of that, and also when you put it under load, um, I think it's there to absorb some of that as well. When we start demanding more from the alternator, I think it's there to help, help excuse me, help with that initial uh, loading but yeah I'm gonna definitely needs a new belt the belt is knackered um, I'm just gonna cut that off to be honest but while I'm in there I'm gonna replace all the belts we're continuing with the rest of our checks we're making sure that everything's freewheeling moving without any issues and I'll be honest with you I believe now the issue with the belt is what I initially thought it was look there we have a massive build-up of plastic off the belt. So we're going to have to clean all this up. There's a little bit of oil there from the oil leak that we need to sort out today as well. But yeah, look at this. And there's off this belt. The belt is knackered. Let's get this fan belt off. And then we can take this belt off and we can start cleaning everything up. Look at that. We'll get all that cleaned up as well. That is bits of belt and oil mixed. Right, we know what the problem is now. Let's get on. Let's get it sorted. So this fan belt is basically a stretch belt. And there's three bolts on it. One there, one there, and one just below there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little gap there. So I've cracked all them off, I'm just going to remove them and take the fan off. With the fan mount now dropped out the way, we just popped it into the fan housing. It allowed us to take the belt off. Now this is the condition of the belt. Have a look at that, it is damaged. And that is the edge that I believe was up against the engine, the front of the engine. So this is supposed to be a six, a V6 belt. So there's one, one missing, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so, yeah, and that is not just at one place. It is at multiple places on the belt. And a little look at that, it is, it is goosed off to the bin. Right, now that's off. It's really important that we clean up all these belts and we get rid of any debris because we don't want that stuck in there damaging our new belt. How often these days do deliveries turn up on time? So it's just gone 20 past 11 
I had a text this morning from APC saying they would be here between 11.09 and 12 o'clock. They've been stood at my door five minutes. So, well done APC. Now this is the alternator. The beefed up alternator. So, that's what's going on today. There's my battery isolator. Later. Isolator. There you go, that's that off. Couple of things to remember. Um, when you're working on your alternator, that is what puts the power into your vehicle. So one of the steps you must take is to disconnect the battery. That's mine disconnected. And just in case it falls back onto the terminal, I put that cover back over it. Now, always prove your isolations. I'm hoping you can see that now. Um, right, so we're just putting the negative onto the chassis and then we're dropping onto the back of the alternator where the bolt is and what we're getting anything absolutely nothing that's great so before that was jumping around a little bit so there's a little bit of noise on there from the uh, leisure side so I've got a couple of things running there the router and I've also got the um what else have I got running I think that's it. I think I've just got the router running and probably what the, the USB chargers. So, yeah, they'll put, put a little bit of noise through. So, we've isolated everything, everything's off in the van. We can crack on. Okay, a couple of connections to disconnect down here. I um, don't know if you can see that yet. We're over that now. So, this little purple wire needs to come off. Oh, there you go. Just push. Push that little tab in there, and then it just slides off. So we'll just bring that up and out the way. Make sure that's it there. So we don't want to get damaged when we're putting everything back in. So we'll lift it and put it there out the way. Then the next connection is the one that goes back to the battery. Just see there, there's a 13 mil nut which has this shroud on it, so we'll take that off. If VW is allowed enough room, we should be able to crack that nut and take that off. And then try not to drop it. And the rain's just started, it's raining right down the crack of my arse. <laughs> right, that's that off. We should just be able to bring that cable back out the way. Again, it's up. We'll just we'll just we'll just fold it back. I know I always talk about the weather in Cumbria on these videos, but this is what we have to put up with. It changes every five minutes, you know. Just, I'll give it 10 minutes and it'll probably pass, but it always comes when I'm busy. Okay, well, the rain's passed over now, so let's start removing this alternator. So, there is one bolt. Now, this is hard to show you again. It is hidden, really hidden. So, it is in this, op this void here. So... This is the pump timing, come down, and it's just to the left in there. It, again, it's another 13. I've already cracked it off, there was no effort involved cracking it off. And this actually holds the alternator in place. So, it's a nice long bolt. And the next one, as you can see, is there again. It's an M13, 13 mil socket, sorry. And uh, just pull them out. Nice long bolts. There you go. Right, that's them two bolts out. Let's just go and make sure they're the same length. Because <laughs> I've had that before. There you go. Both bolts go in. Always do stuff like this. It's easier 
check on that there on the floor than it is when you're trying to handle it into that area and put the put the bolts in at the same time. So I always do that out of the vehicle and then that way you know you know you're you're on the right track. The alternator is buried in here. Now to get the alternator out, which you can't really see, <laughs> it's that's yeah. <coughs> If it's hard to see, it's probably hard to get out. So what we've done is we've uh, we're going to have to move a couple of pipes, I think. So I've released this pipe here that goes to the intercooler. I've taken that jubilee clip off, and I'm going to actually work that pipe off, fold that back, and tuck it out the way. Hopefully that's far enough out the way for us. Now, the other side of that pipe, let's get some light on the subject, runs back here. Now I'm going to see if I can just, if there's any way I can move that out the way without breaking anything. It doesn't look to be connected anywhere. It does, however, look to be another Jubilee clip further back around here so I'll try and loosen that off well we've removed the filter box and we've taken this bracket off here um, sits there supports this water pipe just so we can have a look in to see what's going on disconnected that cable there that's the one that goes on the back of the alternator um, I've taken off the jump start point the positive connection that was fastened up that metal bracket as well so now you can see a bit more what the issue is that is the alternator there and it clashes with the compressor pipe with the air com pipe also we need to get this pipe off here now if we can get this pipe off we might be able to just squeeze it past the AC pipe I don't know I'm still struggling to see how this is ever <laughs> ever coming out of here I, I think we're there I finally got this pipe out of the way if you look there's three three nuts bolts on the bottom sorry and when they're sitting in the van let me show you this so when it's sat in the van it's in kind of that position you're looking down on it and the nuts are there so it's quite hard to uh, to get near them so everything you're doing is blind and they're fastening there and there's two more here and this is the pipe that's in the way but look at that so we can now I believe just roll this out oh yeah that's it um, to move some pipes about to get it out but anyway I'll lift that out now job done <laughs> well half the job is done <sighs> Jesus well done VW well done congratulations on another shitty design right last check is to make sure that everything fits exactly the same and lines up exactly the same the company who bought this off did check for me and said it was compatible and uh, there would be nothing to worry about I didn't doubt them but we always check so this is the Velio 140 um, 14 volt there's no real detail on here apart from the information that you get from the company and again this is a smart alternator but it's a 180 amp output so there you have it I am going to remove this because this one here has never had anything connected to it and I just think it's another thing that will get in my way when I put it back together pop this thing in see how hard it is to pop it back in then it wants to take it out well it went back in there easy enough Making sure everything's lining up as we do as we go along. Cool. 
right. Got to put the pipework back in here now and restore all them brackets. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to get on, do it, and then we'll uh, we'll jump back in. That is the alternator on. I've got everything off apart from the auxiliary belt tensioner. Basically, that is uh, that has a nut that feeds in from the back, and I just can't find it. Um, I know roughly where it is. I just I've never taken one of these off before, so I've got to do a bit of search, and and I'm struggling. I really am struggling to find it. Kind of messed up the other day. So as you know, this is a water oil channel, and um, when I mess up, I try and include it to save you the pain and discomfort that I've just had to go through. So we fit the alternator. Great job. Then I went to fit the <laughs> auxiliary belt tensioner, uh, only to find out that you need the alternator out of the way to get to the bolt that releases the tensioner. So let me show you where it is, because it's in a lovely place. Right, so this is the space where the alternator occupies. There it is, said alternator. And the bolt we're looking for is there. Now, there should be a route through, but there's an engine mount in the way. So the only way you can get to this nut here, this bolt, which is a 13, to release the tensioner, which is just there, is by removing your alternator. Even if you left the alternator in situ, you wouldn't have enough space to get up there with a spanner and do anything with it anyway, so there you go, that's the bugger. And like I say, learn by my mistakes, don't go rushing in, do your own work, watch my videos. <laughs> anyway, if this has been of help, leave a comment below, because I tell you what, there's no videos out there on this subject, so hopefully this is the first one, and it's the right one. Anyway, don't... Don't make my mistake. There you go, that is the bolt loosened off. Don't need to pull it all the way out. Right, once you get that nut loosened off, just a matter of putting your hand down. Do the wiggle. There you go, out it comes. Okie dokie, let's have a look at them. So that's the old one that's just come out. This is the new one that's going in. See that pin there? Don't take that out. I'll tell you when to take that out. But yeah. Pretty much the same, well, they're 100% the same. But looking at the base of there, that looks to have all split in internally. And I think that has been our problem. Looking at it, it's lost, it's lost its strength, I would say. Anyway, it's knackered, it's going in the bin. We'll pop this new one back in. Now on the side, there is a slot, and this bit here fits in that slot. Can't really show you it, but I'll try my best. Right, right in the centre of the shot there, you can see where we're going with this. So, just in there. I see that piece there. It does go in, honestly. There you go. Only goes in one way. That's it in anyway, so now we've just got to tighten up that bolt down there, and that is it, job's a good one. Okay, so it's now time to fit the auxiliary belt back on. One last check, make sure all of the pulleys are clear. Look in there, that looks to be a bit dirty. Let's have a little look at that. Um, I just want to make sure that everything is clean. That is, they are clean, it's just a little bit of discolouring on the pulley. So I'm happy with them. I've given them all a good wire brush. I've gone through with my little picking tool and I've made sure that everything has been removed. Because so I don't want to foul this other belt up. So the tension has still got its pin in. We'll take that out in a moment. But we can put the belt on now. Right, I'm going to try and do all this one-handed now. So we've put the belt on from above, we've dropped it down. We're kind of in position where we need to be. So around the main pulley, we've now got to pull this down and around 
the compressor for the aircon. Just do this nice and gentle. It's got that sat on there, run there. So now we can just flick it over the idle wheel there, making sure everything's still lined up. Now the tensioner still has the pin in. So what we'll do now is take that out. Okay, so we've got a 16 mil splined spanner on there. Now where this hand here, the right hand is underneath. So we'll just take the pressure up on the belt, take that pin out and just load it around slowly onto the belt. And that is it done. That simple. So the next thing for us to do is to put the fan assembly back on. So that's the bracket and the fan itself. There you go, everything's back in where it should be. Fan. Removing, belt on. Maybe I'll focus there. Belt on, bracket on, all nipped up, top cover on. Auxiliary belt, new auxiliary belt there. All this crap to put back now. All the bits that go in there, all the bits that go along there, and then we're done. Right, moment of truth. So we've got everything back together. We'll give it a couple of heats. We've charged the battery. <laughs> uh, yeah, we charged the battery. So hopefully, we shouldn't have any issues. The lights went brighter. Obviously, the alternator is doing its thing. We've got an error code. We'll clean that later. We'll clear that later and I'll clean it. Mm, things are kicking in. Seeing everything dim down there again. The engines are a lot quieter. That's, that was the big thing that was obvious before when the tensioner was jumping around. We had a, we obviously had the issue. Um, we thought it, well, I thought it was the alternator. Turns out it was the tensioner, but while we've been in there, we've put a new alternator on. The good thing is everything is now running nice and quiet, smooth as it was before. Um, no issues. So I'm happy. Um, just got to watch now, see what happens, let, um, let everything settle in, just keep an eye on the belts, make sure they're wearing right. Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. We are now back up and working as we should be, that engine noise is gone, it was really quiet now. The smell has gone, which was very concerning, um, and that's what highlighted the issue to me straight away, there was something seriously wrong. Well, we fixed it now. It's time to move on, get out there and start enjoying this this year in the van. Anyway, I'm going to bed. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you again. Oh, that's my red light. Good night. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.